A uh, very good evening, everyone. Um, I see my friends and colleagues here. Thank you for coming over, and thank you for your support. Um, next time, can consider speaking. Um, <clears throat> this applies to everyone who sits here. If you found anything interesting about CSS, please come share with us. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about myself. Um, I am a. My name is Wei. Uh, you can find me almost anywhere with this non-syllable screen name. Um, I am a React web developer. Uh, and before that, I have been um, creating websites since I was a kid. So I love anything that allows me to spam the world with websites. Um, <coughs> a little bit about the talk today. So it comes from um, a dribble design that I saw um, a few months ago. So this is a Nintendo Switch design. Um, <clears throat> it looks really nice, so I wanted to try implementing this in CSS. Um, most of the features look um, pretty straightforward, uh, except for this intersection here. So there is a curved border that stops me from writing the intersection um, <clears throat> with a div. So, um, so eventually I did this with a manual div intersection um, that I'll show you um, how to do now. So what you do is you put the two divs side by side. So these two are siblings, and they do not contain each other, but one is on top of the other. So you play with the one that's on top, you put another div inside, um, <clears throat> but then you offset this div to match the dimension and the offset of the purple div. And because this div lives inside this yellow div, if you put, um, if you, if you put overflow hidden on the yellow div, you get this nice intersection here. So, <clears throat> So this is how I implemented the, the intersection of my uh, Nintendo. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not happy here, because I needed to manually write that intersection. Um, <clears throat> I cannot stop but wonder, so by the time the browser renders the second um, div, whichever that is, the second panel, it should already know the information uh, about the first panel that it rendered. So it should have a chance to say, hey, I already have this blue pixel uh, down here, and you're rendering this red one. So is there anything you need me to do to somehow combine uh, the two colors and um, render uh, another color? So it turns out, um, <clears throat> so yeah, the question is, there should be a CSS property that does exactly that, right? And it turns out there is. Um, so compositing and blending module level one um, <coughs> specifies uh, exactly this situation. So compositing talks about how shapes combine based on the alpha values of each pixel, uh, which means the opacity or transparency of each pixel. And then blending talks about how colors mix when you stack graphics on top of each other. Um, so the majority of this talk, do I need this? All right, thank you. So the majority, all right, content of this talk comes from the blending section of the specs that I just talked about. Um, I encourage you to read the specs. It is not just words. It has many illustrations that tells you what's going on intuitively. So before we uh, go about talking about the actual blending modes, there are a few terminologies that I need to introduce you to. The first one is backdrop. So backdrop means the content that is already um, on the screen when you are rendering uh, the, the incoming element that you want to render. And then the incoming element is simply called the source. So when you use mix blend mode, you want to put mix blend mode on the source. Um, then it will try to apply some kind of blending function 
on the source, uh, taking into consideration the backdrop that is already uh, <coughs> beneath it. And then the blending function is this uh, mathematical function uh, that takes two parameters, the color of the backdrop and then the color of the uh, source, and then it will, it will spit out another color which is um, going to be um, the final color. But not quite. It will, before it uh, get rendered on the screen, it will be justified to the transparency of the backdrop. So if the backdrop is completely opaque, you will get that color. And if your backdrop is rather transparent, uh, it will only contribute partially to the final color. But for today's uh, talk, we're going to assume that our backdrop is fully opaque so that we can focus on uh, the actual blending function, which is associated with uh, each of the blending modes that we'll talk about. So now we're finally ready to talk about the blending modes. The first non-trivial blending modes um, <coughs> I want to talk about is uh, multiply and screen. Um, so multiply and screen will allow you to um, will allow you to render your combined image that takes into consideration both the backdrop and the source rather uh, linearly and equivalently. Another thing you can do with backdrop and screening is you can uh, do this. Uh, um, not called text effect, which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. So multiply, the definition follows um, pretty straightforwardly from its name. Um, the blending function says if uh, you, I get backdrop and I get source, and then I'll spit out the product of the, of the two colors. And then if you read the specs, it says that multiply darkens the graphics. But um, I'm not really happy with this because what do you mean by multiplying colors? And if I did my math correctly, if I multiply two numbers, if I get a larger number, um, that means I'm getting closer to white, right? So why is it getting darker? So uh, we need to understand um, a little bit more about the CSS color space we're using. Once again, this is the specs, you can read this. Um, so one of the color spaces that CSS uses is called a standard RGB color space. So when we write a number uh, in hex string, which we um, do quite commonly, uh, let's all agree that we're actually talking about three numbers instead of one number. Because the hex string is simply a concatenated version of three uh, hex numbers. Um, furthermore, the standard RGB um, color space is an additive color space, which means uh, we're thinking about light beams. And when we have uh, a combination of light beams, we um, kind of mix them together to get a composited color. And the stronger the light beams are, the stronger our um, the stronger our final color will become. Um, so since we're talking about the strength of a light beam, um, we're actually not really talking about an integer value between 0 and 255. But instead, we're talking about a value between 0 and 1, where 1 represents uh, our light beams are at their strongest strength, and 0 means um, there's nothing there, which gives us black. So now we're ready to understand multiply. Um, what multiply really is doing is they're taking the uh, color components separately, and then they're multiplying the percentage values together to get a final value. And because we're multiplying two numbers that are likely, very likely less than one, we are almost always getting a number that's smaller. So um, in our world with CSS um, standard RGB color space, smaller, um, sm smaller number means closer to back. So that's how it 
gets the uh, graphics darker. So there are a couple of um, intuitions I like to share with you. First, uh, black multiply anything gives you black. Why? Because if we replace black with zero, uh, zero multiply any number is zero. And then white multiply anything gives you that anything. Why? Because white is one, and uh, one multiply any number gives you that number. And furthermore, um, multiplication is commutative. So it doesn't matter whether you put uh, your graphics on backdrop or source, you can swap them, and if you do multiply, you're going to get the same result. There is one more intuition I'd like to share with you. Uh, this is not exactly right because that final pony is kind of like losing the unicorn here, but uh, what I want to share with you here is that um, multiply is a linear operation. So um, when you do multiply, uh, your final color is going to um, take into consideration or preserve the highlights and shadows or say the texture from both um, backdrop and source equivalently and proportionally. Um, <clears throat> we'll see this in action in just a minute. Okay, screen is the complement operation with multiply. Um, <clears throat> what do I mean by that? So uh, when we look at multiply, we're thinking of what is the distance of our color to zero. And then we're taking that distance, we are shrinking them proportionally, and we get our new color that lives closer to zeros. So what screening does is Instead of looking at the distance between my color and, and blackness, I'm going to look at instead the distance between my color and one. And we're going to shrink that number proportionally. And so we're getting closer to whiteness, and then we're taking the complement again. So that's how we get screen. Screen is exactly the complement of multiply. Uh, it will always, almost always get get back a lighter color. Um, so we get similar intuition here. Um, black screen anything gives you anything. And white screen anything gives you white. And then screening is once again uh, commutative. Um, so now we're ready to get some demos going on to show you what's really happening here. Oops. Don't, don't, don't drop it. Okay, that works. So, uh, I hope you can still, still hear me. Oh my god, okay, <laughs> thanks. So, uh, here I'll have, a, I have some uh, utility classes that I've written out already. Full screen is a full screen and backdrop is an image. And then inside this um, div, I'm going to have another full screen. And I'm going to call it source. Okay. And now I'm going to add some styling to the source. So I will add a backdrop, uh, background color, which will be a linear uh, gradient to right, and from yellow to teal. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to apply. Uh, mix, blend, mode, multiply to the source. So now you see uh, the resultant graphics uh, takes both the backdrop, it still preserves my unquote watt here, and it also preserves the linear gradient um, that is present in the source. Um, so let's take a look at what screen does. So instead of getting the image generally darker, it's getting the graphics uh, lighter. But uh, likewise, it still preserves the, the colors pretty nicely. OK. So with the uh, edge cases, uh, with screening and multiply, you can do drop uh, knockout text. So 
Um, let me add some, let me remove the background and uh, add some extra styling. So with knockout text with screening, I want a white background. And I'm gonna have some text here, talk about CSS. I will give it a larger font size and a more visible font family. Okay. Oh, I already have the mix blend mode here. So uh, we can see the knockout effect already, but if without the knockout text, okay. So what happens is, because screen uh, anything with white gives you white, but screening anything with black will give you that anything. And that anything is my Uncle Wat here. And if you want to do this with uh, black background, you can do it with multiply. So we'll have background uh, black, and then color will be, oh yes, black, and then color will be white. And now we lose uh, this knockout already, but if we change it to multiply, we get this uh, nice knockout text with multiply. Um, Okay, thanks. Next, uh, I want to talk about the a uh, couple of two more um, blending modes. Uh, so both multiply and screen we mentioned earlier are commutative, uh, which means multiply A with B gives, is the same as multiply B with A. But highlight and overlay are uh, two blend modes that are not commutative. So <coughs> Uh, the order of your backdrop and uh, source will matter in this case. However, these two are the so-called commuting uh, operations. So overlay A and B is the same, is defined to be the same as highlight B and A. Um, if you look at the specs, there is a scary mathematical function that defines what it is. I have the math part justified uh, at the end of the slide as well. You can read those if you're interested. But for today, I'm just gonna share with you the in, in intuition, what, um, what they're doing um, right there. So um, what Highlight does is um, it will look at the source first. And it will condition on source, whether it's greater than or, greater than or less than 0.5. So it's gonna say, if the source is dark, then I'm gonna darken the backdrop using multiply. And if the source is bright, I'm gonna brighten the backdrop um, also, uh, using screen. So overlay is similar, but the order is reversed. It's gonna look at backdrop first and condition on backdrop. So if backdrop is dark, it's gonna darken the source. And if the backdrop is bright, it's gonna brighten the source also using multiply and overlay. And because they're both doing their actions using multiply and overlay, they're gonna preserve the textures of your graphics pretty nicely and evenly. Um, like I mentioned already, com uh, overlay is commuting operation with highlight. Oh my god, it's not working. Wait, why? Oh, I think I know why. Hang on. Oops. So, um, I, th I think we don't need this. This is re really short, so. Uh, wait, I'm losing. Okay. Can, it, okay, can we see this gentleman here? So, thanks. So, um, so in my source, I have uh, this oil paint here, and I do highlight here. Uh, it's preserving, um, <clears throat> it's, gonna, it's gonna look at the texture of the source first, and then depending on what uh, source is, um, it will darken or brighten the, the backdrop, uh, which is why we can see this, uh, we can still see pretty clearly uh, of our oil paint. But if we do uh, overlay, uh, you can slightly see the guy, but it's gonna take priority of 
um, the backdrop first. So let's look at some. Okay, is anybody take, okay? So um, let's look at some more real um, implementation of overlay. So you have a video on the background, and then you can overlay the text um, on the video. So it's gonna so it's gonna take uh, the texture of your of your backdrop, but you can still see. Uh, the text here. There are some interesting UI that you can implement with this. The next one I want to share with you about is uh, is a blending mode called difference. So once again, the definition follows pretty straightforwardly uh, from its name, but um, I claim that our human eyes are not very good at um, perceiving what's going on with difference. So um, I like to share with you this. Like, um, so I have only two layers here. Let's take a look one by one what's going on. So the first layer are uh, simply vertical stripes of red and whiteness. And then my second layer are only horizontal stripes of red and white. Um, but if I put them together with makes one more difference, we get this uh, teal and black here. Why? Because the difference between white and red, if we think about that, is that's actually the complement color of red, which gives you those teal colors. And then if you take the difference again, you get black. So this is something um, that is pretty easy to follow mathematically, but we might not uh, be able to imagine uh, until we see it. But since uh, when, since what, wait, sorry. Uh, when we, Create stuff on the web, not all of them are coming from uh, the nature, right? So we can create something that's pretty interesting with uh, really pretty interesting UI effect with um, uh, difference. So now I'm going to show you how to create a dark mode um, for my personal website. So dark mode is really hot recently. Um, you can implement this with um, any other implementation, like you can use CSS variables or you can just write separate classes to implement this. But <laughs> this is just one more uh, useless trick that I learned. So, so this is my, so this is my uh, personal site like a couple of days ago. I dumped all the HTML and CSS here. And furthermore, I have put here uh, a toggle so one of them is just a toggle. The other one will expand uh, when I uh, click on the toggle. So how does this give me um, dark mode? So this expanded uh, layer has, uh, is completely white. So if I do mix one mode difference, um, it's going to compute this, the difference between this whiteness with my current background which is somewhat white as well. So white minus uh, somewhat white gives you uh, nothing, nearly nothing, right? So nearly nothing means nearly black uh, in this situation. And then the text is black. So uh, black means nothing in our vocabulary now. So white minus nothing gives you white. So, um, in our, um, so we should expect the new background to be somewhat black and then the new text to be white. And then my links are blue, so with um, this blending mode, it should become uh, some color, which I'll guess uh, yellow. So let's see. Um, I'll, re I'll remove the offset. I'll remove the uh, outline as well. 
Then I'm going to add a mixed blend mode uh, difference. Refresh, OK, then boom. Uh, okay. So we've talked about a few blending modes. Uh, there are a lot more which I'll not have time to go over all of them. Um, but I'd like to uh, mention to you that all of these 12 are something called the separable blending modes. Um, what this means is uh, the RGB channels are computed separately like we, I have shown you already. And there are four more uh, blending modes that CSS supports that, are, uh, that belong to the non-separable blend modes. They are computed in the HSL color space instead of the RGB color space. And they are useful when uh, you're um, working on effect um, that is due to changes on hue, saturation, color, or luminosity. Follows their name. Um, I'd like to share with you one more useless skill uh, that I learned. So if you see this font that I'm using, uh, this is a color font uh, called Gilbert Color. Uh, color font is currently supported by Firefox and Safari on my Mac machine. So uh, it's not yet supported with Chrome. So if you open my slides uh, with Chrome, you won't see this color font. But anyway, uh, one very spectacular feature about this font is that the, when the strokes intersect, there is some interesting blending happening, like you can see here. So uh, I want to figure out what blending mode it is. Um, so I started doing this. Right. So, uh, like doing this all over. And it turns out there are six colors that I listed out here. Um, and then uh, I want to figure out like what the blending mode is used, right? And because I do not have any other inductive tool, uh, what I'll have to do is probably my favorite ma uh, college method, which is guessing. So I'm just I'm just going to guess multiply, OK? So it's really easy. It's the easiest one to follow on the specs. So if we look at this character, it has orange and blue. OK. Test, OK. So it has orange and blue. And in the intersection, I want to figure out what this is. And it seems that I got good luck because, because the um, because in the first channel, the red channel, orange is 255 and blue is 0. So because 0 multiply anything gives you 0, then uh, I'm in good shape, right? Because I don't have to compute this anymore. And then similarly with the third one. So it seems that I only have to figure out the second number. And I do my math correctly. Uh, uh, I'll get 29%. Um, and then 25% uh, converted to 255 get, gives me 75. And if you convert that to hex, it will be 4B. So my guess is uh, this color is 004B00. And let's take a look. Can we see this? <laughs> so it's still a guess uh, because in other intersections, they can, you can have different uh, colors, right? Um, and shit luck might not happen twice. But it turns out that um, all of the intersections follow uh, multiply. Uh, I've also uh, had this code pen that contains all the Gilbert color colors that you can play with. Uh, during this process, uh, I was playing with um, Chrome and Firefox, and I realized that sometimes the numbers don't match, and sometimes the numbers are off by two digits. Um, if you realize two digits out of a maximum three-digit number, that's quite a lot, right? So I thought um, there is magic somewhere, but turns out there is no magic 
there is a bug. Um, so blending mode is not blending correctly with GROM. So when we're learning something, um, we are not, it's common for us to be not sure about ourselves, but um, maybe sometimes the mistake is not with us um, because browsers can have bugs. Um, okay, great. Um, now I got a few more questions. Um, I realized when I play with uh, mix one mode, uh, my laptop is always very hot. Um, like not always, but uh, quite often, it becomes very hot and the flame is going. And so if you realize the blending mode, um, when we play with blending mode, we're actually playing the feature from Photoshop and we're doing it on the browser, right? Um, so if we're talking about an image that's 200 by 200 pixels, and if we're doing overlay, um, that's a lot of work. I guess that's fine to compute this once, but if we're doing animations on a high resolution screen um, with mixed mode um, that's rather complex, um, then I'm guessing they don't go well with each other very well. Does it work on emojis? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, what about this India switch? So it turns out that the choice of this color is, uh, is rather by choice. It's not the result of any blending mode based on these two colors. So no, I did not solve my original problem. Um, but this whole process is fun. And I hope you have fun too. Here is a long list of references. And um, I have, uh, um, so this whole talk, um, I have consulted many friends who helped me. And um, it was originally inspired by a project I was working with Coding Girls. Uh, and then I've done this talk multiple times uh, with friends for dry runs. And I've done this with my company's internal sharing. And I've heard a lot of feedbacks from um, my lovely friends here. So it could not have happened without all of you. Thank you.